Hello folks, you may or may not have noticed that my uploads have been a little bit scarce lately. That's mainly because I've been having kind of hellish weeks in university. There's still going to be at least like three more of these, so I'm not sure how frequently I can upload for these three ne next week. So, like again, I'll always try to get two videos out every week. Sometimes I can only do one. Like last week I got six, so then I couldn't even like do the... Like, I, I struggled to even get the one out, and I basically had to like salvage up some old content I recorded just to like have something out. But yeah, so like I got sick, my voice still isn't 100%. I also was like working all day today and using my voice a lot, so... So, voice is kind of dead, um, solo videos might continue for another couple weeks, and you know, just in general, I kind of, like, I need this slow pace just because university is pretty hard right now, I'm trying to do a lot of things at the same time, you know, I got work at the same time, so I'm trying to do what I can, but you know, there's a lot of other priorities apart from YouTube that I really need to take care of right now, and I cannot always just be doing YouTube stuff, so... Uh, also, in terms of deck previews, I decided that instead of always kind of rushing these out and like doing whatever deck comes out just to like have it done with, I'm, I'm gonna change up the pace. So today we're gonna do golds. I recorded the game for this like a while ago. I don't even remember how it goes, like what happens in it. So it's gonna be something fresh for me to commentate too. Um, but for things like Nubatama, I'm not gonna push out the content now. The deck doesn't interest me whatsoever. I, like, I playtested it a little bit and I just hated it. It wasn't fun at all, I didn't enjoy it whatsoever. Like, I, I'm also kind of enjoying Premium a fair bit more than Standard right now. That might change with upcoming releases. I mean, obviously it's gonna change, DP's coming up, but... Like, right now, Premium, I think, is a bit more interesting to look at and analyze. There's some topics that I want to cover, like like Shirayuki in the meta, and then talk about decks like Garmore or Messianic Lord Blaster, like all these things that I kind of want to talk about here and there. So you'll probably see over the next few weeks as I kind of, you know, struggle with the the, the harsh realities of, of adulthood. But apart from that, like, you can expect, like, a Nubatama deck preview probably in the next wave of Nubatama support. And then, like, Link Joker, I think I was gonna make a deleter one, but I'm not that hot on them either. So I think I'll wait until Messiahs come out in Standard, because I think that that's... I really like Messiahs as an archetype. It was the only Link Joker archetype I ever played. And so, for me, that's a lot more exciting to talk about than deleters. So I hope you can understand. For Bermuda, I'll just pick one of the many decks that they're putting in the extra booster and do one on that. So I'm still gonna cover all the clans. I think it's pretty well known now that I don't enjoy making these videos much anymore because it's always bothering my friends to you know help me out with the footage and then like you know the, the only thing I enjoy is the commentary aspect of it and you know like I don't like making deck pre deck profiles in general that much unless I get to kind of like meme around with them like with the exculpate one at least that was kind of fun but yeah that's just kind of my stance so anyway that was it for this that little like intro PSA kind of like information update kind of thing so let's just get into the deck also, you might notice that the footage might be a bit smoother. I rebooted my entire PC, so things are running better. But anyway, we're gonna look at Gold, gonna look at Azel specifically. Um, and I do play the kind of like super Azel build rather than like the kind of like half, kind of like Azel, but with like, the, you know, other roots. So as you can see, we're playing four of the Raven Haired and four of the Incandescent Lion. So, first we're going to look at Blondazel, who is kind of like a base of the deck. So, Blondazel's skill is in hand and act. If you have Bowmaint and Gareth on your Vanguard or Rearguard circles, you may Soul Blast a Kirfa from your soul, write him a stand from your hand, and if your opponent's Vanguard is grade 2 or less, he loses one drive until end of turn. So, pretty standard write up skill. If your opponent, like if you're going first, you can do this while your opponent's on grade 1, but you do lose the, the one drive. And then when he attacks from Vanguard circle, you may call a card from your hand to Rearguard circle. So, it's what Azel's supposed to do, it rides up fast, and it gets you a superior call in mid-battle phase, which is nice. And, you know, this is obviously, like, the deck's good, in premium it's even better, but in standard it's already, you know, it's something. Then our second form that just, well, not just came out, it came out a couple months ago, like, I really took my time with this, like, you can see how little motivation I've had for this series, but Raven-Haired Azel also has two skills, he has a hand skill, if your Vanguard is Blondazel, then you can count almost one and ride him from hand. That way you mitigate the Blondazel's loss of a drive check, and if like if you go into this on turn two. And then he has a Vanguard Circle skill. When he attacks, if you have a Blondazel in your soul, then you can count almost one. And for that turn, he gets plus 15k power, plus one crit, and your opponent can't guard with Sentinels. So it's a pretty good skill, but it was really good on reveal. And then when we play, when people started playtesting it, they were like, ah, damn, this deck just kind of gets like... It loses momentum after that one turn, and it gets Candle Blast starved, and then your opponent just kind of like damage denies you for a, lot, a bunch, and then like you run out of steam and lose, or like you just keep hoping that your opponent 
gives you damage at some point. Like, it's pretty hard to, like, work with this outside of just, like, keep riding great threes or do what a lot of decks are doing right now, which is play four Sagramore. So Sagramore is one placed from hand, Vanguard, Rearguard Circle, Skill, Cannon Bus, I mean, you may Soul Bus 1, you draw a card and call a card from your hand to Rearguard Circle. So because the deck gets Cannon Bus starved quite a lot by good opponents, you need cards like this that actually, like, kind of still push some sort of advantage like sagramore is a plus minus zero but it's technically a plus one from the draw and you get to call and trigger any like one place from hand effects as well it can happen in the battle phase if you call it with blonde hazel but chances are you won't because you like if you're kind of a starve then you're probably on raven haired anyway right so play four sagramores i know it seems kind of bricky but i like all these lists are playing four sagramores for a reason it's just because this deck gets kind of a starve really easily then we play four Wonder Azel, so this is the the new way to get into Azel. So as a Vanguard Circle act, you may Soul Blast one, and then retire a Howl on your Rearguard Circle. Then you search your deck for a Blonde Azel and write it as Stand, and for that turn it loses one Drive check. So there's no condition, it just loses the Drive. And then he has a Rearguard Circle skill. When placed, you may choose a card from your hand and call it. So this isn't a well when placed from hand skill, which is quite nice, so that if you like. I don't know, get it from the Vivi and you can actually use a skill, but then you minus one from hand, obviously, onto the field. So you don't, like, it, he doesn't draw a card or anything to, like, make up for that, which is, you know, it makes sense because he's a when placed skill, so that's pretty good. This is a nice skill because you can soul blast anything. You know, having the Howl is a bit rough because he's not searchable like the Gareth, but, you know, both both the Wonder Azel as well as the Bowmains, they have something to search and they have something they need to have on hand. So that's kind of, you know, that's just how it works. So we're going to look at our other friend, which is the Bowmains. So that's what I meant. Like, some builds just run the Wonder Azel and then they run a bunch of stuff that just, like, calls. And then some builds are, like, super turbo Azel. They run both Bowmains and the Wonder Azel. And so Bowmain skill is pretty easy. When placed from hand, you can discard a card from your hand. If you do, you search a deck for a Gareth and call it to Rearguard Circle, shuffle your deck. So that way you have both of the necessary targets on board for Blonde Azel's in hand skill. And then when placed by your card's ability on Rearguard Circle, he gets plus 3k until end of turn. Pretty simple, like 12k attacker, even, you know, after you ride him, but I mean, after you after you've used the skill or whatever but obviously like for a lot of like in premium you basically have to mulligan your hands to just like get him because that's kind of like where the whole like win con lies in and so that's pretty important overall but like he's he's just a good card like he's honestly a good card in both formats and then i play two vivians because like we are pretty low in space because of these four sagramores but two vivian because again she uses up your candle blast and your soul blast and you're already getting candle blast starved so you're not going to be actually be getting her off that often so she has a skill when placed from hand to rear guard circle you make candle blast one soul blast one look at the top three call one to rear guard circle the rest go in the bottom of your deck in any order and she gets plus three k in the line of turns so in theory good skill she's better than garmore if anything like if you really want to play her more of the just play garmore it's actually a better deck in my opinion um, but so that's it for our grade twos then we have four of the howl obviously so his skill is actually quite good too at the end of the battle it boosted if you have an azel named vanguard you may cut almost one and put him into your soul which is good because we sold us a lot and then if you do you draw one and you choose one card from your hand and call it to a rearguard circle so Again, uses up Counter Blast, so that's a little bit of an iffy point, but he gives you a soul, and he also gives you a battle phase call. So, kind of depends how you work around it, and then, like, to combat this entire thing with, like, being Counter Blast starved, you do run the four Dindrains. You're either going to use your skill to draw a card, or you're going to use your skill to get the counter charge and the plus 3k, but she does cost the Soul Blast. So, again, there's a lot of stuff in this, in this deck that uses the soul, and so it's pretty... You need to be careful with what you use it on basically because like you don't want to lose out on momentum all of a sudden and like not be able to like because you can easily just like soul blast one for a din drain just to get one more candle that's open for the howl and then howl goes into soul anyway to give you that soul later and you can call like a sagramore off of that and then use that one soul that you generated from howl to call something else with a sagramore and draw a card so i think it's pretty important to like just be careful with those plays in this deck obviously you need to be careful with your plays in any deck but I'd say specifically with this, you know, it's something you don't want to just randomly mess up and be like, oops, that could have won me the game, but I messed up and I didn't do that. So then we play three Gal Gareth, three because he's searchable with the bow mains. Um, he's still a good card. Like if your opponent gives you, if you get like crit at like, I don't know, on like turn two or turn three, your opponent just keeps critting you and you're at five or something. You can easily just like push back with this, like just use that extra cannon blast for that 10k. 
and just like push for higher numbers on an axle circle this would be 28 in that sense so it's pretty pretty good for that i think so three is enough in my opinion because you can search him so i don't think you need to max him out in that sense then i play the eight crit four draw four heal i think that's pretty standard for this azel variant so i don't think that really needs too much explanation so that's it for this azel build now let's take a look at how it performs in the one game that i well i recorded several games but in the game that i recorded that i have absolutely no memory of all right, so now we're going to have a matchup against Shadows, actually. So that's going to be interesting because it's going to be the GBT of VB204, rather, Shadows. So that's going to be nice. We're going to see some Gust Blaster gameplay, etc. My opening hand actually looks pretty nutty. But the thing is that, like, I have to essentially choose... I mean, essentially, like, it's a good hand. But I'm really YOLOing to draw into another grade 1 so I can actually do the Howl Wonder Azel play. So it's a little bit risky in that sense, but I was like, <clears throat> if I keep the bow mains, then I would have to draw into the normal Azel. So I was like, I need to draw into something anyway. Luckily, I draw into the Din Drain, so thank God. And I basically am going to be able to go up to the Azel really quickly. And he gets the turn one, so obviously that's not the most optimal, but it's still pretty good. And also the reason why you run a lot of crits in this deck, I mean, it's unfortunate that I drew into two of them already, is like... You want to be hitting your opponent, if you can get that crit at the start, it's going to be so good, because if you can crit them, you know, turn 1, turn 2, you're going to be swinging with a Raven Haired, with a Guard Restrict, with a crit, when they're at 4 damage, and that's just going to be huge. So, here I get into the Wonder Azel, and I manage to do the play, go into the normal Blonde Azel, and get myself the Axel, and then go into the Raven Haired from my hand to mitigate the loss of that Drive Check, and then I'm able to actually get myself the second Axel Circle while my opponent's on Grade 2. So, not Grade 1, but I mean, still pretty good. Here I'm gonna use both of my two um two of the god sagramores almost forgot his name unfortunately not drawing into anything nice i basically just drew into two triggers that's pretty unfortunate i get i get a draw off of that drive check so that's pretty good we see a gust blaster go to the damage which is also pretty all right i think you know and then he's gonna be able to guard against that sagramore and then i think he's gonna take the other one I think it would have been smarter to obviously take the first one because, I mean, unless it's it's to do with the power additions and stuff, but I mean, that's something else entirely. He goes into the Gust Blaster right off the bat, so unable to draw into the PBD first. It's a bit, bit unfortunate, I would say, just because, you know, Gust Blaster loses a lot of his pressure if you're not able to ride something else first. I mean, obviously you can, like, ride Gust Blaster and then ride another Gust Blaster on top, but then it's like, if you would have to go back, like, if you don't have another Gust Blaster in hand, you might as well, like, just right into a PBD or something if the situation calls for that, but otherwise like it's a pretty big oof in my opinion in that sense, so <clears throat> I think Gust Blaster is still good in, in like as a first ride because you still get to do the retire, but you just lose out on that crit pressure which is really huge otherwise. Uh, also my opponent uh, Amber Sama, our, our good friend of the channel, he forgot his force gift at the start there, but I mean it's, it's never too late until you actually go into your battle phase. But I mean, I mean, it is too late. You're supposed to acquire it when you ride, please. Like, I've had comments in the past where, like, I said something along those lines, and then people were like, uh, no, you're supposed to, you know, you, how, like, I did this in the tournament, and I got, like, a warning. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it says in the rules that when you acquire a gift, you have to acquire it immediately. I'm just saying, like, for a casual game like this, I'm not gonna, you know, rule shark my, one of my best friends over something like that. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm trying to say. But anyway, here he's gonna swing with the Gust Blaster. He doesn't use his skill, I mean, he's out of Camel Blast. And there's no real reason to use it there, I think. Or, yeah, because, like, I'm not gonna be, you know, I don't really care about my Sagramores or that crit in the back anyway, because I can call out other stuff. And I have the one Camel Blast here as well to actually use my um, Howl. So that's quite pretty cool too. But I mean, Thing is, I have the counterblast to use the Howl, but I could also use that counterblast for the um, Raven Haired Azel, which is actually a bit more productive here. And, you know, my opponent's at 3 damage, it has a lot more pressure in that sense as well, I think. So here I'm going to be just swinging with the Raven Haired. I'm going to use the skill to get a plus 15k plus 1 crit and also the Guard Restrict. Being on 3 damage, that is pretty scary. You know, he can risk to take it or he's going to guard it with, ooh, 2 heals now. It's going to be healing the crit, putting himself up to 48 in total so that will be a pretty solid two to pass if i'm not mistaken so i get a heal which is pretty good go back down to two so that's going to give me a bit more leeway depending on how much he wants to starve me of cannon blast shadows can take their time like shadows if they can play the long game they can play it extremely well and so that's why i think like it's going to depend here on how well he can just survive this i think my bow mains does it hit there i, I didn't call it with an effect so i think that actually 
I, unless I gave it a trigger effect, I can't remember actually. Maybe I gave it the trigger, that's why it hit the Maka, but um, yeah, that's something. So here we can see that unfortunately Amber-sama doesn't actually draw into another Gust Blaster, so he chooses to go for the PBD. Um, I can kind of see why, because he doesn't have any Counter Blast, like I, I didn't give him Counter Blast for that reason, but I mean, the thing is that like, even then, it's more worth to just ride anything for the extra force to actually like kind of push in that sense rather than just keep trying to you know stall out and wait for another gust blaster and stuff like that like now he has an, a little bit of a numbers advantage in that sense and that's pretty big and standard even at this point and especially since he's kind of just like grinding right now and just like oh he gets a heal so like he's able to counter blast deny me and he's also like gonna be able to keep healing you know for as long as our damage remains more or less equal so that's actually pretty big and here essentially what i would have to do here is like like i'm gonna pg it because i still want to have something to attack with but oh no here i'm gonna think twice and i like oh i pg'd it because i was like oh you know it's gonna be a huge number because it's the the grade 2 that gains power but then i was like oh wait no that one doesn't gain power it's only on vanguard when he attacks the vanguard so that's why i was like oh, okay it's fine so here I'm gonna just ride another Raven Herod for the extra Axel, like try to keep pushing, hope for a crit, don't get anything. Just get the Wonder Azel and the Vivian, which aren't gonna be doing much here unfortunately, so that's pretty bad. I mean Wonder Azel can extend and like call something from hand, but I mean that's only really a big deal if it's in the battle phase. I think potentially one thing I could have done maybe is like, I, I you could say oh maybe I shouldn't have gone to the, for the Raven Herod too early, but in that sense, like, also if I checked the double crit there with the Raven hair, that would have been a completely different thing, you know, depending, it kind of depends on that case. And so I think that's why this build is like, it's super high rolly, and so that's why I think like in standard it works. But there's the other build of Azel, which is more like, less focused on just like turboing yourself to Azel and more using like, the various superior calling cards to like, have something to do when you don't have any Kanawas to work with. So I think like it's... It's one of two cases, and I think both builds are pretty good as well. I mean, Garmore is getting more results in, in terms of standard uh, golds, and so that's something else to think about. But <clears throat> here, um, uh, Amber-sama is... He retired three of my rears, which, you know, he, he is able to do, and then he wanted to use the PVD skill to deal me a damage, and I was like, ah, no, you forgot about my Gareth. So now he's kind of stuck in this weird position where, like, he has one counter blast. If he has a blaster dark, he can, you know, retire my last rear guard, but it doesn't look like that. So he calls down the sword breaker, calls down the Karen. I mean, he's just kind of pushing down numbers at this point. But, I mean, it's it's a bit of a strange scenario. I think if he had a blaster dark there, it would have been perfect. But I think he just got caught off guard, you know, didn't notice the Axel Circle Gareth being there. And I think, like, you can't really blame him for that in that sense. Like, plus we were playing really late at night, and so it's kind of hard to... Uh, notice those things at that hour when you're already pretty tired, so that, that, you know, give him the benefit of the doubt, all these things happen. But he does check into a Gust Blaster and a, and a heal, which is pretty big, because here, I mean, healing is nice, even though he's still at 4 damage, like, he's gonna have to guard my Raven Herod, but then he can take it easy against one of these attacks that I'm gonna throw at him, and I still only have 1 damage, so I just plop down my hand, I attack with a 27 with a crit, and I mean, that's pretty easy to guard too, maybe I should have dropped the heal behind, but I mean, he drops 2 heals, to guard with and like that just shows that me dropping that heal would have actually been detrimental so here i'm gonna try to just push him see what happens he takes the one damage i attack with the wonder azel he just needs to guard that with a 15 the vivian is the same just drop a 10 and it's fine so he can really guard this pretty easily he drops the uh, apg so i guess it doesn't have much better uh let's see what he's gonna do he do did pg away the gust blaster but he has another one in hand that's the fourth axle circle of this game i think so we won Gust Blaster, PBD, PBD, Gust Blaster, so his soul is looking good, he's got a lot of great threes in there. If this was the old Gust Blaster, he'd be gaining a lot of power too, but, I mean, you don't need to because the new Gust Blaster is, is just really, really good. So, I mean, like, this card is really good. Like, he's now just gonna essentially do the thing that a lot of people do, which is just, like, <clears throat> calling a bunch of cards over other rearguards to proc the retires, and now, like, Gust Blaster has plus one crit. Now he's gonna be able to call down the Trumpeter, plus one crit again. So that's again another power addition. He's gonna be able to use the trumpeter skill to actually search out the grade zero and be able to, or not the grade zero, I think it's a 5k power unit. And so he's gonna be able to do that and just decide what he wants to search. Does it have to be in rest though? So it's either like the Nemain or or the Break Sword, if I'm not. Oh no, it's not the Break Sword, is it? it got <laughs> I mixed up the name again. It was something else. I always forget it. Or like, you know, there's also the the, 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 the sword breaker as well that he can search out and stuff like that but here he's just gonna attack with it he got the plus two crit already 
just from calling out the two cards on top of each other. And then here, like, he's gonna be able to swing with the Gust Blaster and use its skill to basically just, like, attack me. And I had one heal trigger in hand, you know, I, I could not guard this attack because it has two Force Markers on it, plus the big power bonus as well. And on top of that, like, he got the Retire. He got to retire two cards just there, so that gives him another plus two crit, so he's a plus four crit right now. And that's just, like... That's just devastating. Like, I, if I take this, I another crit, so plus five. So I have to take five, five damage. There's no way I can heal out of that. So that's gonna be game for this match. And that's gonna wrap it up for this deck preview. So thank you for your patience to those of you gold players that are waiting for this. I still like, like I was giving up on this one to be honest, and just like the series in general. And then like the other day, I just saw a comment. I was like, is that Azel deck preview still happening? I was like. I really should get that out, huh? So, thank you for your patience. I know it's been a while. I'm not expecting this to get many views, if at all, just because it's so irrelevant at this point. You know, other people are <clears throat> making VBT04 content or Bermuda content, or, whereas here I am still doing ultra rare slash Miyagi backlog. And but at least like now it's settled. So yeah, that's that. So. I don't know, expect maybe the next one to be Messiahs or Bermuda or I don't know, depending depending on what I feel like. I just like, it, it's hard to do this. I think it's gonna be, it would be easier to make these kind of videos if Vanguard EX was already out and I could just like jump on like multiplayer on the Switch and just like record that for these kind of videos. Like that'd be much easier, but I mean, you know, beggars can't be choosers. So maybe at some point, you know, maybe that's a preview of what's to come in the future of this year, but that's gonna be it for me today. So thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video check out the good stuff in the description as always but on that note that's gonna be it for me today so i'll see you guys next time bye bye